So we're probably going to skip the whole like part of classifying the hazard and stuff, mm -hmm. but let's say that this is is a ordinary hazard or light hazard. Let's say this, let's just say it's light hazard. You know it's a light hazard <laughs> space. And we know you, you got to have a lot of knowns, right? So the other thing that we know is we're going to have to know a ceiling height or a deck height. So let's say that this is at 12 foot 0 deck height. So it's 12 foot to the highest point in this. And these are just up in sprinklers. Okay, we know it's light hazard. Um, it's 12 foot. There's upright sprinklers. We're using a quick response sprinkler. And we'll get into that more. If you guys don't quite know that yet. Yeah. It's just a type of sprinkler. Yeah. Does it change with any slant in the ceiling? It will. Yep. So let's say it's flat. That's what we're Flat. Um, Okay, so your first step is you say, well, then first thing we got to say, we got to draw the remote area, and what is it? What is it? Is it the area like that's most remote from your water source? It's typically, that's why it's called a remote area. Yeah. It's, it's typically going to be the most remote location. Not always. It's the most demanding area. It's really the most demanding area. So it's really your design area. So you, a lot of guys call it remote area because they're like, well, it's the most remote portion. But not always. But it's your, your design area. So now I'm going to design this area. What is that? Do you have any ideas what it is? What is it telling me? Why am I doing that? The system works. So, yeah, sure the system works. works. So what is that the remote worst. area kind of representing? Uh, worst case. Worst case, what is it? <laughs> so I draw a box around these four heads. What am I saying? What's happening? Pressure and flow? Is that what you mean? No, like let's say I just draw a remote area here. That's where our fire is. That's where fire is at, right? right. So how fire, how big is the fire going to be, and how many sprinklers is it going to trip? Every sprinkler that ends up in my design area, you know, we'll try to call it, is saying they're they're going off. So it's not like the movies. I hopefully somebody's told you this already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not every sprinkler goes off in the whole building, right? <laughs> so all it's going to happen is say, okay, the fire is going to grow so big that the heat's going to pop or trigger so many sprinklers. So the code and testing is kind of shown how big a fire based on the hazard and the ceiling heights and everything else about roughly how big the fire could get or how many sprinklers it's going to trip. So it's that's not the area like of how big the fire is, it's just the total number of sprinklers it's required to put out that fire? Yeah. Or just how many sprinklers the, the fire is? The density is how much water you got to put on it, but it's just saying how quick it's going to go and how many or sprinklers it's going to trip. And a lot of it's based on testing. They test these scenarios and they're like, yeah, this is how many it did or this is how big it got. Sort of, yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy to think of it as like that. Just think of it as a fire. If fire is that big, and every head above it's going to go off. It's pretty, probably the easiest way to think about it. Okay. So the the then once we kind of we know what it is, right? So now we know it's we've said that this building is considered light hazard, and we know a couple other things about it. And so now you're like, okay, good, that's cool. Well, he said it's the most remote location. Typically, you said it's the most hydraulically demanding. So, could we have more than one remote area? One more design if they're is, is equally hydraulically demanding, right? Yeah, I mean, if 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 everything's typical, we may only have one, but we could essentially have 400 remote areas or design areas in our building to prove different situations or different hazards. And in this case, if it's all the same occupancy, it's all light hazard and it's all space is the same and all the pipes are the same, then I can pretty much go to the furthest location and prove it works there. And if it works here, then it'll work here because it's closer to the riser. Right? So we know where we think it's going to start is probably this corner, right? My riser's here, the farthest pipe length is all the way up to that sprinkler. That's probably my most demanding locate head because and it's the furthest. Just because this is flat, and that's the farthest point. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. So how, maybe this is a question for later, but how could you tell that there was like an area that was more hydraulically um, demanded? Like besides? this, you know, a lot of guys do this and they don't get what they're doing, but they, there's like a, let's say there's ductwork right here. And they need more sprinklers over here. What they'll do is they're like, oh, that's really easy. I'll just do it like this. 
feed those sprinklers off that branch line. And this might be four inch pipe for the main, and this is only two inch pipe. If that's only two inch pipe, all these are here. So if you think about what happens, if I drew a remote area up here and I did a calculation and it worked, it's not really proven this works because if I do a remote area right here, it's going to pick up, in this case, I only proved I could get four sprinklers flowing through one piece of two inch pipe, right? Before it came off the four inch main. Whereas because we teed off here and, and added, now if I drew that area right here, it's not as far away, but there's one, two, three, four, five heads all flowing through that first piece of two inch. So now all of a sudden that's more demanding than that, even though it's closer to there. Just because there's more heads because there's Attached more that heads branch line. off that branch line that fall into that design area. Okay. That's where people get messed up real quick. And that's what's so hard. It's really easy when you're designing to be like, oh yeah, it's simple. I got a line here, I'll pull off there and go over there. Then you make it really hard for yourself to do your calcs and proof without doing a whole bunch of extra remote areas that you really don't want to be doing. And the other thing I found is that if you keep things simple, you have a very simple straight shot run to your lines, to your calcs, to your, I mean, to your sprinklers. It's easy for you to design. It's easy to clean up the drawing. It's easy to calculate because I need one. And just by default, because all those things, it then is easy to install because it's that simple. It's just straightforward. So like, for instance, a lot of times here, because that happens, instead of doing that, you might just be better off to kind of do its own line right here. Instead of that piece of pipe, which is about the same as that, I've just made my life way easier because now that proves that this works. Because, because now I don't, I didn't do anything different here. This is four sprinklers flowing, and this worked. And if I drew an area here, there's three on a branch line before it gets to a main. Right. Two, three, three it's okay. going to work. So now I don't have to do two calcs, right? Versus what happens if I do this and I run this calc. Now to make this work, I might have to upsize that one piece of pipe. And now I've introduced a third pipe size into my system. And so now it's just one more thing i got to remember to order. Dif you know, bigger, different, that extra size of hanger rings, that extra size of branch lines. The, and then my field guy's got to dig through more pipe to find those specific things. And all that extra work versus keeping it all two inch, is <laughs> off to just be consistent and, and keep it simple. Yeah. Simple is smart. And it helps make it easy to count. So that would be one reason, but there's a million different reasons more challenging more, you know you may need more areas a lot of it usually will be hazards right i have light hazard over here and i have ordinary hazard right here so you need more well, light hazard isn't going to prove ordinary hazard first so i got to do two calcs just because of that even though this is closer that still doesn't prove that one um all right so back to where we were so this one i so the first thing you're going to say, okay, cool, I know where it's going to be, right? But now I kind of know how big it is, right? I guess. I don't know. So you got to go to your book. You got to find uh, the density area curves. Assuming we're using regular sprinklers. So, what is that? 11.2.3.1.1. So this is something you kind of should get familiar with. It's 11.1. And that's in the 2016 edition. Sometimes it varies a little bit. That's what you're looking at. So this is the thing that tells you what that density is required and also the design area, how big it has to be, okay? Before we even get into that, well, cal like calculation-wise is if I have a bigger or smaller area, which what's going to be easier, what's going to work better than the other smaller area? So the smaller area is going to count better for us, right? Because I have less sprinklers flowing, less water, smaller pipes. So we don't want to go bigger than we have to, but there is a minimum based on testing, right? So you'll get to know these kind of in your head, but I want you to understand that this is where it all ultimately comes from, is your little density area curve. So light hazard is right here. We look at our, our graph, 
and bring out light, ordinary one, ordinary two, extra hazard, extra hazard. So light hazard, you actually have options. Pretty much everybody kind of runs across the bottom. If you look at it, the side here, that's the area of sprinkler operation. That's your design area in square footage. And then down on the bottom is your density. So you're pretty much always best to just pick at the very bottom of the curve. Because you're going to have the higher density, but you're going to have the smaller area, less heads you're going to get. There's very few times you've ever that I would run up the curve to a higher, a bigger area. And you're just going to count more sprinklers. You're going to overflow. So typically, you kind of get commonly see that, all right, light hazard, what is the low, the, the lowest design area I can get based on that curve? 1,500. Yep. 1,500 square foot to the bottom, and what's the density? 0.1 gallons per minute. 0.1 over 1,500, that's light like hazard. What's ordinary one? 0.15 at 1,500. 0.15 at 1,500, what's ordinary two? 0.2 at 1,500. 0.2 or 1,500. And then what about extra hazard? We're getting into extra hazard group one. 0.3 at 2,500. Yeah, so it's up, but you can't even go down to that spot. You gotta go at least, because they're saying that fire is gonna grow real fast. It's gonna burn really hot. It's gonna grow really fast. It's gonna trip or trip or trip. No, I trigger way more sprinklers yeah so you got to do this big area right so cool light hazard you so, said is 0 0.1 and you said you're always bad well 90 most of the time you're best picking the point at the bottom of the curve yes so 0 0.1 gallons per minute per square foot that's density over 1500 square foot area um so, well, what do we start with? 1,500? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right, pretty easy. So we dropped 1,500 square foot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just ignore this quick response sprinkler. Let's just, to make our life simpler, let's say it's a, it's a standard response sprinkler. Basically, that's just the old school sprinkler that's been around forever. At that, you have no reduction or anything you can take. It says, all right, it is what it is. So we got to get 1,500 square foot design. So we got to draw that. So this is where the science begins. Well, how do I draw this thing? Is it a circle or a triangle or a square or a rectangle? Or what is it, right? Well, the book tells you it's rectangular in nature or something. <laughs> they try to make it look like a rectangle, but it's not that easy because... Does the rectangle look like this? Or does it look, or does it look like this, long and skinny this way? Or what kind of rectangle are we talking about? Right? Anybody for extra credit want to tell me if I did my rectangle like this or like this, which one's going to be more demanding? The one where you're long and skinny this way. Is going to be more demanding, you think? Yes, I think Yeah, so. why? Because it's one branch line. Yes, exactly. So if I had my choice and I didn't have to follow the book and I just had to draw a damn rectangle, I'm going to draw me a long skinny rectangle at the end of a branch line. I'm going to pick it up one head on every branch line. It's going to count amazing. I'll run one inch for all of the branch line. But that's why the book says, well, you can't do that. we got to tell you at least you got to make a rectangle. And that rectangle has to go a certain length down the length of the branch line so that it picks up enough sprinklers on a branch line. It's worst case. What they're saying is if the fire starts here, it's, it has a chance that what's the worst case it would draw would grow in the same direction as a branch line because if you prove that works then it's going to work if it goes that way or that way right so yeah that's exactly right I really would do this but sorry you can't do it so <laughs> take that out so the rectangle side is all the long side is always going to be parallel with your branch line okay that's what it should look like so, so we're actually going to kind of do our rectangle the, the long lines here. So then there's an equation to make your life even easier that says how far do I have to go? Well, it's based on your remote area size. Okay, so here you go. Write this down. 1.2 times the square root of your area. When I say your area, that's your design area. Whatever it currently is. In our case, we have standard response sprinklers. It's 1,500. So that is, let's say, the length along the branch line. So if I take 1.2 times the square root of what? 1,500. 1,500. I get 47 feet or something like that. I think it's about, about 47 feet. And that's in feet, length. So I know that, I know my length. So 
And that says I gotta go 47 feet down the length of a branch line. So when I come here, I'm gonna say, all right, I said my farthest point is this corner of the building. And this sprinkler, my design area covers what my sprinklers protect to. So this sprinkler's protecting all the way to this wall and this wall. Oh, I spaced it right. So my remote area starts here. And I've gotta go at least 47 feet along the branch line. So I've gotta go down 47 feet. Okay. I find out where that falls. For, and it doesn't matter. I don't care where the main's at. I don't care if the main's down here or if the main was here. You cross the main as if it wasn't there. If you're not to it, then you do your 47 feet. But this is where it's important. This sprinkler, if we looked at this sprinkler, let's say 47 feet was right here, just a little bit past that sprinkler. Well, that sprinkler itself is protecting halfway between this sprinkler and it sprays halfway to this sprinkler. And it sprays halfway between those. So in all reality, that sprinkler is protecting that space, right? Well, that is in that protection area of that sprinkler. So I gotta pick up the rest of, the, I, I can, basically. I wanna take my remote area all the way to the edge of where that protects me. So 47 feet just fell just past there. I'd bring it to there, and that's where I would cut. And then I'd start moving back this way. I don't wanna go any further than I have to because if I go longer than I really have to, I will be 47, so if I do that, I may be a 50. But I have to go at least 47 and pick up that head. So you, I don't so, wanna go 60 feet because now I'm just killing myself. I'm so why did, you go, I, why did you go a little bit farther? I kinda... So this sprinkler, if I looked at these, all these sprinklers around this, and this sprinkler itself mm -hmm. is protecting halfway to there and this one sprays back to halfway to there mm. and same thing here it sprays halfway and it sprays half so you just want to get like the full coverage area so where you break your remote area is to the edge of where your sprinkler is protected to so if i'm in the protection of that sprinkler i run it down to the halfway there does that make sense so you just want to end where the coverage area of that sprinkler ends correct okay so check this out Let's say that I drew this and I said 47 feet actually was to right here. Now what happens? So then you're good. I go, well, oh, am I good? Yeah, I gotta go 47 yeah. feet of protection. Yeah. Now that 47 feet is out of the protection of that here. It's actually So now you gotta go to that, that one. Yeah, because now I'm into this one. I actually have to pick up that whole extra head. So now I'd have to bring that remote area all the way down and include that and then come across halfway. So you're usually gonna be more than the 47 just because of where that head falls. Or whatever you figure, but you don't want to go any more heads than you absolutely have to because that's just bad. So, if you're in the coverage area of another head, you have to include that last head in it as well. Correct. Okay. That's exactly. If your branch line is not 47 foot, if you're if this stopped and their main was here and your branch line was just that length, you pick up the whole branch line. You can't go anywhere. So, you pick up the whole thing and if, go to the next one. If you had two branch lines for some reason, one here, one here, and they all they never connect. You, know, you, you, would, you would just cross you the main and you come going. down. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just cross the main, come down, and look at that next one. Sometimes that's, I want to say it's never a rectangle. You never have this perfect rectangle. Yeah. Unless you're in a warehouse. It's always this kind of oblong, mm -hmm. weird looking shape. Or a, or a lot of times it might be a rectangle with a little extra leg on it. We'll see why. Okay. So, does that make sense? All right, so we got our 47 feet. So let me get this out of the way so so let's say we're back to where we were and 47 fell just short of the halfway point between these two sprinklers. So I really am gonna pick up that one. So I'd bring my remote area down to the halfway and I'd cut across, okay? And then I'd go halfway between these sprinklers and maybe bring it back up. So that's a rectangle, right? Four sprinklers, rectangle, everything's right. But now we look and that area may only be 400 square feet. Well, you gotta have 1,500. Right? So now we got to start adding more in. Okay, So here's where it gets a little more complicated. But it's not bad if you just follow. Like in this situation, it's very simple. If you follow this one simple myth, all you got to do is the book says you go to the next. After you pick up the length, you got to get the length. Yeah. Then the next head you choose has to be on the head on the next adjacent branch line. And we're going to pick up the sprinkler closest to the main and work our way out the branch line, towards the end of the branch line. Okay, it's a little backwards from what you think. What is that saying? I'm gonna to go to the next adjacent branch line, which is this one. I've already got my 47, so I'm down to here. 
We go to the next adjacent branch line. I'm gonna pick up, the first head I pick up is gonna be the one closest to the main. Which one's closer to the main? This one, this one, this one, or this one? The bottom one. That one. I'm actually gonna pick up that sprinkler first. So now I'm gonna come over halfway, halfway between all of them, right? Because that's the area of the sprinkler. And my remote area would look like that. Well, that one, that corner. All right, so now we're at, let's say, 550 square feet. Still not big enough, we need 15, right? So what's the next sprinkler? Next one. Right, do I go down here? Because you I already got my 47 feet, right? You got your it wouldn't be wrong to come down so here and go longer, but it's bad design. You don't know. I already got my 47. Once I get that, forget about that. Yeah. We go here. So now I say, what's the next closest one on that line? We got our 47, so it's this one, right? Close. So then I say, oh, it's not big enough, so I'm going to pick up that sprinkler. Still not big enough. Pick up that sprinkler. Still not big enough, right? Pick up that sprinkler. Okay, still not big enough. So now what? Pretty simple. <laughs> Pretty simple. I'm gonna just go to the next one, right? Until you get to a point where you got your 1500, or maybe a little over. You can go over there. You're probably gonna be able to buy a little. Bit. You don't want to go big more than you have to. So we just keep doing that until we get. That's it. That's all you gotta do. It's that simple. So now when I do this calculation, it's gonna include all of those sprinklers. Flowing. So eight, nine sprinklers, let's say, would all be set to flow based on a density of a point one in their area of coverage. So can you say that part where we go over this way again? Yes. Yeah, so you're just going to go to the next adjacent branch line and pick up the next closest sprinkler to the main on that branch line first, and then you work your way towards the out to the end of the branch line. You got to pick up the rest of that branch line again before you jump to the next. Jason. While you're right, I want to trick you a little bit. This is a kind of I don't know where I would draw this. Okay, so let's say I had this same situation, but my 47 feet put me down to here. Okay. I'll trick you a little bit. If you follow exactly what I told you, you won't be tricked. Same thing, my main's right through the middle. The 47 foot puts me here, so I'm gonna do my remote area. I'm gonna come down here, cut across halfway, and come back up. What's the next sprinkler I pick up? What the, this one? Well, it depends because it depends if you're into the coverage area of that bottom sprinkler. You said that one? Right. So the next adjacent. What do you mean? Well, well, the first well, oh, yeah, sorry. Good catch. Let's say it was yeah, halfway. Okay, got it. <laughs> See, you guys are getting too good. All right, that's just short of halfway. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you're right. Good catch. Okay, so, so that's that halfway one. between. Okay, so we're like, all right, we're good here. We got our length. We got halfway. That's not big enough. I got to pick up one more sprinkler. What's the next sprinkler? Uh, the bottom or the top one. <laughs> we know we go to the next adjacent branch line. Okay, so yeah, but the one, whichever one's closer to, to, to closest. Yeah, one of those first two. One of the one. first two. So one which one's closer? closer? Looks like the bottom one. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's actually closer. So my first head I'm going to oops, would actually pick up would be that one. Just right? because it's closer <laughs> to the cross main going across? Yeah. Because it says closest to the main, work your way out. So <coughs> actually that spring. <coughs> now what's the next head I pick up? Uh, you work out of the branch, right? Yeah, so I'm going to pick the head closest to the main and work my way out. 
So whichever one's closer so to the top. The next the closest one, to the, the main. Yeah. Below. So is this one closer to that main or is that one closer to the main? It looks like the top one's closer. So well, actually, to the main. that one is right. So now I'm actually going to pick up this one. But then you're going to now which the, one? Now you're going to pick up the now bottom. Now I'm going to jump back down and pick up this bottom. That's where you're Okay. Go. So you don't do it in order. So no. once you pick the adjacent so. branch, you don't always work down the branch. You always look for the closest right. one to the main yeah. first. More times than most, it's like that first example yeah, you where you're on the line, you just work your way out. But you get times where this happens and. But that's where it gets screwed up because people will still do their little L down uh -huh. here. It's not right. Okay. It's not that big of a difference, honestly, but it's it's not right. So then I would pick up that one last. Does that make it sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess th this is my next question. Since those two pieces of pipe, this branch line and then the branch line on the bottom, it's two separate pieces of pipe, correct? Because yeah. it's like it's going to be connected with like a. I guess like a whatever you call it, like a crossing. TV it could, thing. yeah, and it could, it depends how it is connected. But we yes. still treat it as as if it's one branch line, if it's yeah, and honest, itself. Yes, but even if like like Matt was asking earlier, even if this line was over here, wasn't directly in line with that, it really wouldn't be that much different. Other than it would actually jog, so halfway would be here, yeah. and then at that point, halfway it kind of goes out, right? Going. Whoops. Yes. Well, yeah. That was really lousily drawn. Yeah. Okay. But here's the thing, and this might be hard to get to explain just with this, but the way calculations work in your fire sprinklers is it's a demand calc. We're saying I have a known water supply. And I'm have at the furthest, at the worst case, I know I have to get at least to this amount of water, this density on the ground. Okay, so for instance, let's say this sprinkler is spaced. 200 square foot is what the protection area of that sprinkler is. If it's 200 square feet and I gotta get 0.1 gallons a minute on the ground out of that sprinkler, I have a density of 0.1 and I know the head's covered 200 square feet, how much water is flowing out of the head or do I need to flow? 20 gallons a minute. 20 gallons a minute, right? So I'd say, well, in order to achieve that with that density, I need 20 GPM. Okay? If I need 20 GPM to that sprinkler, now I kind of need to know what the K factor is so I can figure out what the pressure I need to push 20 gallons a minute through a certain size hole, which is your orifice. That's what the K factor is representing. Okay. Well, so, the K so what is the K factor? The K factor is just is a, is a coefficient that represents how big of an orifice or how big a hole when you break that sprinkler, the water spraying. So it's Typically it's going to be half inch up to three quarters of an inch or pretty small. Most of the normal sprinklers. So the K factor is proportional to the size of the orifice right. that the water is coming out of? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So don't get too hung up. We're not going over that. I just want yeah. you to kind of understand why. Because so many people want to say they want to grab that end head and work their way the opposite direction. Yeah. Because it's further, right? But you got to understand we're not doing a supply. We're doing demand mm -hmm. count. So what we're saying is we need 20 GPM here. So in order to get 20 GPM here, maybe I need... Uh, I'm guessing, I don't know, let's say we need 11 PSI. <laughs> don't do any numbers, I don't think that'll work. <laughs> well, let's say you need 11 PSI for whatever K factor you have here to get 20 gallons a minute. Now, in order to get 11 PSI to that end point, is the pressure going to be higher or lower at this point? Higher. It's gonna be higher because I gotta overcome that friction loss for that pipe. Yeah. So now if I say though well, it's higher, then it's 11.5 psi at that point. Same sprinkler. Is that gonna flow more or less than 20 gallons a minute? It's gonna flow more. More. Yeah, have to flow more. So it's more, more, even more. Yeah. And so the so one when over I get here, to this point, this head is actually that. gonna overflow, is what we call it, more than this head. Right. And that's why we pick up those heads first. Those are actually more demanding. You're going to flow more water than the one at the end. Because I'm going to be losing pressure until I get to that end head, so it's not going to overflow. So the more pressure. It's still going to be more than 20. Right. Because it's back further, but it, it might be like 20.5 or something. So the more pressure you have, the more flow you have. Well, couldn't you argue that if you took a slur out here, None of these are flowing, so it doesn't matter. The highest pressure loss is out to here. You know what I'm saying, like if if you said that's the end of your remote area, none of these are flowing, so they're not they're not they're not in a situation where these are pulling more. But they're all being line. driven by this head. By that head. If you didn't take that out and you started your remote area at this head, then you're right, and that one will get the most demand because it's a starting hill. But because this one's driving the cows, it's further away. 
I can show you um, how to spring clear. It's kind of confusing mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So you're like, want to say, well, that's further away. But it's all because it's based off your most demanding head and it's working its way backwards. And then all the other heads overflow. So it's how much they would actually use versus how much they need or after you use the one that exactly needs the it. most. You gotta get at least that much to that one okay. or all of them. In order to get that, then these are all gonna flow. So really the density coming out that these are providing all the other heads is gonna be more than one. Yeah, so you get done. But that's a minimum. You gotta mm -hmm. get at least that. Okay? So does that make sense? Yes. Oh, one more. Yeah. Um, if this is your 47 foot, and then you say you come back, and then the closest to the main, and you're bouncing, you're bouncing. If you need to continue, you don't go any further this way. You just start going up this main. Yep. I mean, this branch line. Yeah, so you you've already picked here, up your 47. And so you come down here, and then you just continue the right hand. Correct. You look at that next line. You see, okay, 47 is still. Going okay. There. So you only flip flop until you hit that until line. Until you hit that and line, then you move and then up. you just keep moving up the branch line. Exactly right. Okay, so now you're pros. So let me add a little element to this called the quick response reduction. Um, Okay, so uh, um, I guess before we go to that, I want to show one other thing. Just popped in my mind. I forgot it. Oh, this will throw you off. There's an equation in the book they follow that tells you kind of how to draw a mode. Okay, and, and that, one place you can find this, let me show you all, this is really handy. In, in your handbook, it's got to be in the handbook. It doesn't matter if it's the 2013 or 2016. There's a uh, supplement in the back. It's supplement number two. Supplement number two they added a couple years back. It's awesome. Step by step, I draw calculations. They kind of walk you through a little example, and they tell you exactly what I just showed you of how to draw your rectangle, which head you pick up next. And they even give you that formula. Get 1.2 squared A is your length. Right? They explain it a little bit too, so I recommend you all go read through that when you get done. That's always fun to read. That supplement is awesome. If you don't have a handbook for now, we can make a copy of it for you. It's called. We we'll want to get you on. It's just called uh, uh, Step by Step Hydraulic Calculations, Supplement 2. So, but what you'll see in the book, a lot of times, the way I was taught, I didn't, kind of didn't, I was taught this way, and that's why I'm teaching you this way, because I think it's the best way. But really, the equation is 1.2 times the square root of A over S, I think it is. Am right? Okay, A is your design area, S is your spacing and your sprinklers along the line. What happens is this equation comes out and tells you how many sprinklers you have to pick up on the branch line. Instead of giving you a length, it says you gotta pick up at least four heads along the branch line, okay? Based, and so what it says is, well, if I'm spaced 10 feet apart and I put that in, that tells me how many I need. What if they're spaced, so? Okay. What if they're not spaced evenly across the branch? That's line? exactly a good question, and that's why I'm teaching that. Because this is pretty uncommon that they're all perfect. Okay, and if they're not all the same, then yeah, what do you use? Use the worst case, I guess, the biggest. But even that, what'll happen? And sometimes is if I don't, this works perfect. This is great. In a well, perfect if world, if every sprinkler is spaced maximum at their max spacing of what they can be, and you spaced it correctly, and you do this, this will work. But the code says you have to get that, but you also have to meet that length of the 1.2 right here. And I'm here to tell you, you cannot do this and get your length and not get the right number of heads. You'll get at least the heads you need if you do just the length. So you don't have to worry about this. As long as you get the length, you're gonna have enough heads. The only way you can do this and not get enough heads on your line is 
have to go back to sprinkler spacing 101 because you overspaced sprinklers. Because of the way the math works. It wouldn't happen. You couldn't end up with less heads than what you do in the length if you space the heads. So you don't only can use that if it's uniformly spaced. They're all the same. This for yeah. the most part, yeah. So I try, I just I don't want to teach you that because I don't see a point. I think this is your better option. But I want you to understand that because when you start looking in the book and you start seeing this and you're like, Ben taught me this and what is this S and you get all confused, I want you to understand that. So as get long your length, draw your rectangle, you can't go wrong. Yeah, so as long as you use that equation and then you go to the coverage area of the last sprinkler captured within that 47, you're good. Correct. Okay. Okay, I'm going to race out. Okay. Not forgetting we saw this one. No, I mean, and I, I'd have to look a little closer with the EC sprinklers. It might start to apply, but um, you shouldn't have to worry about it. All right, so let me throw another element in there. So now we've said 1,500, we did a thing. We're done. That's pretty much it. That's how you drive one here. So we'll do one on yours, but I want to add one more thing in there. Years back, they came out with this idea of, like, well, if the sprinkler goes off faster, it's going to control the fire faster, and therefore fire's not going to grow as big and less sprinklers are going to go off, right? So they called it a quick response sprinkler. <laughs> so it goes off quicker. So they started making these sprinklers that, tr that trip faster, go off faster, and therefore they control the fire faster. I was, so, I was just talking to Dexter about that earlier because I was noticing that there's certain temperature readings for some sprinklers. But, so say like you have a 155 degree rated sprinkler head and then you have a 175 degree rated sprinkler head where the 155 is uh, standard response and the 175 is quick response. What, what is the difference? I mean, I don't understand like why. You have to ask the question. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna try to explain that because I don't know how to explain it well. <laughs> it's all been tested. That can be for another time. You're, you're totally right because plus. you're like, okay, well then what tells you a quick response at 155 should go up or uh, let's say a standard response at 155 should go off faster than 175 quick response, right? Yeah. It's because it's standard, but it's all in the testing listing and it is very, very minimal. Like even from what I've been taught and heard from some of the manufacturers, the difference in time between temperatures is like fractions of seconds between like a 155 and a 200 degree head. It's so minimal that it's not even all that much. And they've actually started allowing you to use 200 or intermediate degree temp heads and all light hazard interchangeable whether you want to do that no difference but the whole quick response thing it has to do with the response time index all this crap um, it's a good thing you should look that up you tell me because I, I, it's 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 it hasn't been clear in my head yet to really totally get it but they do say as long as you use quick response sprinklers you can reduce your own area size okay because Going to control faster. Fire's not going to grow as big, so it's not going to get to 1500. It's going to be smaller. But there's things that affect that too, because I could have a quick response sprinkler in this room that's got a nine or ten foot ceiling, and if there's a fire that starts here, that's going to go off real fast because the fire's right here. The, the heat's going to go to the ceiling and it's going to trip through that sprinkler quickly. But what if I was in this building and it was a warehouse and it was at 25 feet? And the fire starts here. Is it going to go off as quick? Is it, it's, no, it's, it's going to take longer, so the fire's still going to grow big. So the quick response reduction takes in a few more factors. It says, well, number one, you better have a quick response sprinkler. So let's say that we use QR sprinklers. Well, that's good. I can do that. The other thing it takes into account is my ceiling height. All right? It says, well, if you have a lower ceiling, you can probably reduce your area more than if you have a higher ceiling. And at some point, maybe let's say 20 feet, for instance, once I get above 20 feet, I can't do a reduction anymore, right? And they also said, well, at some point when you get so low, it doesn't make a difference, enough, right? If it's an eight foot ceiling or a 10 foot ceiling, it's not gonna really matter. It's gonna go off so fast. So they actually limit your reduction too. So basically it says 10 foot ceiling, that's the best case you can ever have. Even if it's an eight foot ceiling, you can't go less than if you have an over 20 foot ceiling, you can't do this reduction in our area. So it needs to be between 10 and 20? It needs to be anywhere under 20. Anywhere. It's just that if it's under, there's an equation that gives you a percent of reduction. If you plug in eight foot, you're gonna get a higher percent of reduction. They cap you at 40%, you can't, and that's 10 foot ceiling. Okay. So you'll see when we start working it out. 
Um, um, so it looks like it's 11. 11.2.3.2.3 is quick response sprinklers. This little graph you'll get used to seeing. So essentially the graph, 11.2.3.2.3. Yep. 2.3.2.3. Yep, 11.2.3.2.3. So anyway, you'll see that you should have that page. Little graph thing. Really, you could pull it off the graph, but it's hard to interpret that. So there's an equation that generates a graph. And what it says is y, which is your percent of reduction, right? Not percent of area, it's percent of actual reduction of your area, is equal to negative 3 times x over 2, so 3 halves x plus 55. All right? It's a pretty simple equation. We don't do hard math. No so integrals? No integrals. So y is percent area reduction? Percent of reduction, yeah. Uh, and then I'd be bad to tell you this without making sure you understood these things. So there's other things that apply. So we already said ceiling heights and the sprinklers themselves. Mm -hmm. It also has to be a wet system. Wet sprinkler system. You can't use it on dry because the dry system is going to be way delayed. Yeah. So we actually have to increase that. But a wet system, a light and ordinary occupancy. So I can use quick response reduction in ordinary or light, but I can't use it on extra hazard. Okay. And it says light and ordinary. It doesn't say ordinary one or ordinary two, so it applies to both ordinary one and two, just as ordinary has your offense. 20 foot max ceiling height. No, this one gets overlooked a lot. Technically, if you're doing quick response reduction, you cannot have any unprotected ceiling pockets. If you have unprotected ceiling pockets, that's like let's say at a conference room where the ceiling bumped up two feet in the middle and came back down. And you only had sprinklers around the outside, you didn't have sprinklers up inside that pocket, you couldn't do the quick response reduction. People do it all the time and it's wrong. So, so if you, you're saying that the, the ceiling that's higher is higher than 20 feet? No, what, it's more about pockets. We'll have to get into that with you. But it's okay. like, let's say that right here I had a, the ceiling came out, but then it jumped up three feet and went across and dropped back down three feet and you had kind of this like, skylight looking pocket and you didn't have a sprinkler inside there you just had the sprinklers down below mm -hmm. that inside that ceiling pocket now doesn't have a sprinkler in there it's saying if you design it the system that way you can't do quick response so a lot of times so that I can take quick response I'll put a head in the ceiling pocket it's not worth it mm -hmm. right one will cook I saved one sprinkler now I didn't do quick response reduction and all my pipe in my whole buildings two pipe sizes bigger than it needs to be because of that one sprinkler I saved Good deal, good job, so don't do that. Sometimes you wanna just include that head just for that. Um, and then they've added, this was a newer one, but no unprotected areas above cloud ceilings. This last edition, uh, you know, architects all over the place are making these fancy clouds. So like, instead of maybe this ceiling going all the way to the wall, they want it to look cool, so they leave it open to structure, and then they start the ceiling out here, and it's like this little floating ceiling. Where it doesn't actually close off. You can see the bar joist over here, but the ceiling hangs. Yeah. Up. It's a cloud. It's just hanging off wire or something. Yeah. So it's starting to become a. In almost every building you do nowadays has some sort of clouds. It, I think it's it looks cool. It's like, and I think I heard it also helps with acoustics or something. So, but. Anyway, so those are all the things you have to meet to be able to do the quick response reduction. But most of the time, we usually meet all those things. So in this case, we got a flat ceiling. We got quick response sprinklers. We got a 12 foot deck height. It's under 20 foot. We're going to say there's no unprotected ceiling pockets, no clouds, because it's all open to some mm -hmm. rays, and it's light hazard. So we can do it. So now we do that equation. So minus 3 halves times x plus 55 is my percent of reduction. When I punch it into my calculator, I just go negative 1.5 times x plus 55. It's a lot easier than trying to put in your uh, uh, fraction. fraction right? X is your ceiling height. Got it? So, negative 1.5 times what? 12? 12. 12 foot plus 55. Who's got a calculator? 
grab one. So it's negative 18. So it's 37. Look at that. Beast. 37% reduction. So we can reduce our area by 37%. So I have to have 1,500, but I can reduce it by 37%. So I take 37% of 1,500 and subtract that off of 1,500. Or you can just do And then you redo this for your length. Yes. Okay, you, know, you don't use the same. Yeah, so we should get rid of that. You're right. Okay. I don't know if they, there was a code where it said, yeah. no, still okay. use this. Then, we'll use our finished area size. Okay, so then 37% off of 1,500 is 945. And then you put that in the in that yeah. equation for so your So if wife. we figure 30%, 7% reduction off 1,500 is what? 945. So it'd be 945 is my total area, square foot. That's my new design area, mm -hmm. required minimum, right? So now I would have to put that number into this to start my to start drawing. So I'd say 1.2 times square root of 945 is 36.9, 36.9 feet, and that's my now my length that I do 36 feet. So my remote area is going to be small, good. right? Yeah. It's, it makes a big difference. Yeah, that do you have a round up? Do we work in quarters or eighths? No, or? I mean, you can do that perfectly, but usually I just kind of, unless it makes that big a difference, I kind of say that's about 37 feet. You can't go less. Right. right. But if it falls that 36.9 it is under the halfway point where 37 is over, go, go don't on. go over. Go to that 36.9. You don't mm -hmm. want to go further than you have to. Don't. The codes are written in air safety factor, you know, don't do more than you have to. So, um, so we put that in, we draw our 30, we get our nine, then we have to make sure we get at least 945. Mm -hmm. That's it. Cool. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty easy. All right.